So we got an election and a Donald Trump update for you here. We have some big changes coming with president and some other things that have just shifted. And we're going to take a look at it here. So strap in. Alrighty, so here we go, jumping into the deep end of the pool here and getting everybody triggered. <laughs> no, um, you know, I'm, I'll make this update and usually I have to turn the comments off now because people get so triggered with the political updates. And it's really a way to certainly look at the effects of, you know, the transits um, and the political climate and whatnot. Um, and we we have such a good case study with the president trump because he's such a public figure and he's so out there and um you know we just recently had the midterm elections in 2018 and by the way i pretty much predicted it pretty correctly um i said definitely that i saw there was going to be a division i really underplayed the idea that there would be a quote blue wave but frankly we gotta now say by all accounts it was a blue wave not only did the democrats pick up more seats in the house than they have since the time of nixon since the time of watergate but now of course they didn't flip the senate but it would have been really really hard to flip the senate because of because most of the senate seats that were up were actually democratic and in fact yes the republicans gained two seats in the Senate, it seems. It might even be three seats in the Senate. So you could say that that really, um, you know, was a kind of buttress against what you could call a blue wave. But again, considering not only did the Democrats flip the House by a large margin, also the voter turnout, which is just the aggregate number of votes, eight million more votes cast for Democrats, every race skewed toward Democrats, including Texas. I mean, the Democrats almost won Texas. Um, they also held some seats that they thought were that they were going to lose. They flipped Arizona, which was um, Jeff Flake's old seat. So they also flipped many state houses and governorships. Now, one of the reasons why it didn't seem as much of a blue wave is because many high profile races were won by Republicans, especially in Florida, in the Georgia governor's race, and also in Texas. These were some pretty high profile races that went pretty early on election night for Republicans. And it looked like Republicans were going to really, you know, clean up and maybe gain six or seven seats even perhaps in the Senate. But it winds up that they maybe gained about three seats in the Senate at the most. But Democrats really took the House by a wide margin, flipped a lot of, um, you know, governorships and in general, you know, garnered many more votes than the Republicans and really shifted everything toward the blue, which includes a lot of the suburban swing voters that Trump, quote, won. He actually lost the you know, he actually lost the popular vote in 2016, but he won because he won independence. It's not, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see and to know that these independent voters, the ones who were kind of sick of the status quo, um, really wanted to give Trump a chance, but they definitely weren't people who were, you know, make America great hat wearing people. They were independents who were ready for a change. And he's really bled independence since he got elected because of all of his divisive rhetoric playing to his base. They're definitely not, you know, people who are going to be, you know, persuaded to all of his hard policies like on immigration and these tax cuts and all the stuff that he's done. Um, so especially, you know, all of the rhetoric, all of the incendiary rhetoric has shown in polling, even leading up to the election that he had lost a lot of independent support, if not most of it. He's also, he also had really lost a lot of that white women suburban vote that he actually won in 2016. So this demographic shift, this is the price you pay for just playing to your base and not trying to grow your base at all, which is what he's done. 
And again, we shouldn't be surprised, but it was a real verdict on his presidency so far. And of course, since the election, he's been kind of flipping out. Um, he fired Jeff Sessions immediately after and put in this, you know, Matt Whitaker, um, which again, there's all kinds of legal peril that could be coming down the pike for him. And, you know, not to mention what Mueller might release, but also what Whitaker might try to obstruct, not to mention looming next year, which is one of the main reasons I wanted to do this update, is the Democrats taking over the House and oversight, which means the capacity, the ability, and the certainty of subpoenaing his tax records, um, oversight that has not been done, um, is going to be um, rampant. And it should be because he has gotten a blank check to do anything he wants um, without any oversight. And this is why he's been freaking out. Um, just some real disastrous things also since the elections. He's not been able to really focus. He goes to celebrate the World War I, you know, to honor World War I soldiers and the end of the war. And he doesn't even go to the memorial because of getting his hair wet. I mean, this is just... Anyway, I mean, there's no secret that I'm not a fan, but it's embarrassing. And again, those of you who are Trump fans, are you really proud of this? Honestly, I mean, come on. This is just embarrassing, needless to say. But he knows things are coming, and he's right. But let me also say this. Trump is benefiting from, he's also going to be benefiting the next year or so from some favorable transits, in particular Jupiter, going over his fourth house, his moon K2 in Scorpio. Now Jupiter does show justice, and it's showing how justice is coming into his house, but it's also an auspicious transit. It's no question that Jupiter going through his fourth house could definitely be a protective shield against legal, the legal um, ramifications, which means there's going to be investigations into his legal shenanigans, if there are any there. Ha <laughs> ha. Right. Um, and there's going and these things are going to be exposed, but he's we can simply tell by the fact that they don't have enough in the Senate to impeach him. You got to get, uh, you know, two thirds of the Senate, even if the House were to, let's say, start articles of impeachment and actually pass them. The Senate probably wouldn't do it. We don't know. We don't know what evidence Mueller's going to bring back. He might bring back some really incriminating, damning evidence, which could then sink him, because there's that potential as well. Um, but I have a feeling that Jupiter going through his fourth house is going to shield him from any ultimate legal jeopardy, at least while Jupiter is going through Scorpio, which is between now and this time next year. But that notwithstanding, again, what we're seeing and what we saw in the midterms is an omen of things to come. And by the way, I keep hearing people say, oh, he's going to win in 2020 unless they do something. It's possible. But I will also tell you that he's going to be in Jupiter Saturn Dasha at that time as well. And he's about to start Jupiter Saturn Dasha in January of 2019. You can see right here, Jupiter Saturn. He starts January 3rd, 2019, Jupiter Saturn. He's been in Jupiter, Jupiter, right when the new Congress takes their oath, he starts Jupiter, Saturn. And yes, Saturn is what you think Saturn is, especially for a Leo. It's the sixth house ruler and the seventh house ruler, but Saturn is also in his 12th house with Venus. 12th house has to do with things like, I'm not saying he's going to prison, but it does have to do with prison, it has to do with secrets getting exposed, coming out. Again, he's been dealing with this transit of Rahu through his 12th house for the last couple, for the last year and a half or so. And Rahu going through his 12th house is going to get right on top of his natal Venus and Saturn early next year, like February, March. So this is the chart of the Gochara of the transits, okay? And I'll put, let me see, we'll run this animated transits We'll run this, we'll run it um, by week. So now we're here, I'm, I'm recording this on um, November 18th. So if we run it forward, you see 
Rahu going 303, now 307, 304. This is early next year. This is like in February, you know, early February. Rahu is right on his natal Venus. And actually, let me just bring up a, was this it? No, let me just bring up a new chart. Um, and it's one of the problems with this, ugh, with the, when you run the transits, you can't see the date. So let me just run that. So now we'll do it here. So this is where it is, 451 now here on November 18th. And then this is November 25th, December 2nd, December 9th, December 16th. Oh, yeah, so 240 is December 23rd, December 30th. So this is where 246, 238. So at the beginning of the year, or I should say at the end of this year, sorry, like at the end of December and going into next year, Rahu is going to be right on his natal Venus. I would not be surprised if we see more, I would say, even truthful stories about, let's say, sex scandals or hard evidence, like let's say with all that stuff that came out with the election rigging that Michael Cohen said that, you know, Trump has been an unindicted co-conspirator in a federal crime that it, it's already there. And again, if he wasn't president, he could be indicted right now. And again, you might see this happen very soon. And many people are calling for that. Frankly, I think that should happen. I think they need to test this rule that you can't indict a sitting president. By the way, they tried to indict Bill Clinton, and they were, and it was said that you could indict a sitting president. But they're not doing it with Donald Trump. But there is plenty of evidence to indict him based on the confession of Michael Cohen, his former lawyer who directly fingered him in the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. Again, how much imagination does it take to know that Donald Trump directed Michael Cohen to pay Stormy Daniels that money? What, Michael Cohen's going to do it himself of his own direction? No, Michael Cohen said what was obvious, that he did that at the direction of the candidate. And it was hush money to quiet her up and to then to not report it. As it, Now, again, it's debatable whether or not that was a campaign violation or not. But again, an indictment doesn't mean a, that you're that you're you know that you're convicted. But you indict someone and then the courts challenge it. So he should be indicted. He's already been fingered and as part of a larger indictment of Michael Cohen. So he's an unindicted co-conspirator. When someone when the when the courts hand down an indictment, it says, okay, now you need to prove now you can challenge the indictment, which is lawyers could do, and say you can't indict a sitting president or challenge the evidence or challenge all of that. That's the legal system. Now they don't even do it. So this is what you should understand about your legal system right now in America. The president is above the law. At least this one is. Where anyone else would have been indicted as an unindicted co-conspirator would be the only reason he's not is because he's president. So again, indicting him doesn't mean he's found guilty. It means the legal process has now started. So they need to challenge this and they should pass, they should hand down an indictment. The Southern District of New York or whoever has the indictment should follow through on it and make the legal system work, make the courts decide whether or not it's legal. And again, this could happen. I think around the end of this year, it could definitely happen because there might be more evidence that comes forth as Rahu gets close to his Venus. Because look, this is this is January 6th, 2019. Rahu is at 235 of Cancer. His, you know, the president's Venus is in the 12th house at 238. That's an exact conjunction at the end of this year. You might see something right at the end of this year where some legal move takes place and perhaps an indictment is handed down. Or you may see his, this, obstruction, you know, um, cadre that has been set up in the in the Department of Justice, this Matthew Whitaker, who is the sitting DOJ, which, by the way, the, you know, the chief justice, or I'm sorry, the, um, you know, the um, chief attorney, uh, the attorney general, or acting attorney general, is supposed to be our lawyer. He's not the president's lawyer. He's the people's lawyer to make sure justice is served. You might see him 
obstruct justice. We might see all kinds of legal problems coming at the end of this year revolving around Trump and his scandals and perhaps women and all of this stuff. Again, Venus is also Trump's 10th Lord. So that, that includes all of his business dealings. You might see bank records from Deutsche Bank subpoenaed. You're going to see all of this stuff after January because the Democrats are going to take control of the House and they're going to start subpoenaing these records, his tax records, his bank records. I hope they also really get into this whole thing of his Trump server pinging the Russian bank for God knows how long. I don't remember the time frame, but there is some really obvious stuff that stinks to high heaven of major corruption and easy to prove, especially if they if they subpoena the forensic records, which I think the House is going to do and they should do because they were elected to do this. They were elected in this midterm for oversight. So Trump is in a world of hurt right now and he knows it. That's why he's been freaking out so much since the since the um, since uh, the midterms. Now, my prediction of the midterms was basically that we would still have a split House and Senate, which we have. I downplayed the potential for the blue wave, but said it could also very well be like a, a bit of a tsunami, which it's which it's clearly turned into. Um, didn't seem like it on election night because of the high profile case of uh, the high profile elections that went to Republicans. But since then, it's very clear that at least within the electorate, the tide has really turned. Again, every one of the races trended toward blue. Ted Cruz almost lost Texas. I mean, every race trended toward five to 10 points, at least blue, if not much more. So don't think Trump isn't aware of this. This is why he came out and has been, you know, firing bullets since then. And by the way, he also lost the court case to ban CNN's credentials of, of that, of their White House reporter. So we're seeing some legal losses already since Jupiter went into his, into his fourth house and went over his moon Ketu. But I tend to think that in general, this Jupiter going through moon Ketu is going to provide some protection. I could be wrong about that and I'd be happy to be wrong, but we're already seeing it to some extent. We're already seeing the papering over of the outrageous appointment of Matthew Whitaker. It's outrageous. It's probably unconstitutional. But again, it's going to get pushed. Something could be unconstitutional, but it needs to be tested. So these things are going to get tested. And again, the thing to really look at is in January, when he goes into Jupiter, Saturn, his life is about to get a lot harder. No question, because these things are going to get tested. And just like Adam Schiff, who was the oversight chairman in the House, has said, we're watching. And again, the House has oversight power to, you know, to oversee this. I'm not, but again, it's tricky because you can provide oversight, but the remedies are ambiguous at best because you need full support to do anything about it. So this is why I say, ultimately, it could very well be that this protection that Trump gets will sustain, but there's always the ballot box. There's always the degradation of, you know, the electorate, which we've already seen in the midterms. Now, a midterm shellacking doesn't translate into a loss in the general election, for sure. Barack Obama proved that in 2010, when he got pretty much sort of creamed in the midterms of 2010 and then won the election in 2012. It does all depend on what happened since then. And there's a lot, there's a long way to go between now and then. But one thing is not up for debate is Jupiter Saturn is going to be a lot harder for Trump than Jupiter Jupiter. He's just been able to skate by the first couple of years of his presidency with no oversight, with no like Saturn consequences. And now there's going to be these consequences. We're going to get a report from Mueller at some point. We're going to get oversight from the House. And this is big. This is huge, actually. I think we're going to start to see some indictments handed down. And I think they need to test this theory that you can't indict a sitting president because he's already fingered as an unindicted co-conspirator. And people are going to start calling for some 
justice at least some consequences for what most of us see, except for the people with the MAGA hats and the others who are, you know, sort of dyed in the wool, think Trump is some kind of savior figure. Um, the rest of us are like, this is just unacceptable. And that's probably about 60 to 60, 65 percent of the country or more. And it's not even, you know, this is the kind of, you know, backlash against this, these times that are so abnormal. And, you know, not even talking about just the obvious things like using the caravan to drum up, you know, fear before the election and just so on and on and on. Don't even, not even going to talk about it because it's just so obvious. Um, and so look at the changes that are coming. Jupiter, Saturn in January of next year. Again, Saturn rules his sixth house of enemies. Saturn is also going through the fifth house, but the biggest transits are this Rahu closing in on his natal Venus and then his also his natal Saturn. If we continue the transits, we can see at the end of this year, or I'm sorry, January 6, 2019, Rahu is right on his natal Venus. Then we keep going forward. Again, this is February 10th, 17th. You see Rahu gets closer and closer to his natal Saturn. Again, next spring, we could see some real, you know, early in the spring. Let's say right here, March 17th, right on his natal Saturn. So February into the spring, very hairy transits. Let's say, usually we see when we get about within about a degree. So I'd say about right here, March, like early March into, you know, till around the end of March. Yeah, to around the, around the last week in March. This is a good study in the true node because the node kind of slows down here and then it speeds up pretty quickly. So from, this is February 24th, then March 3rd, the node only moves one degree, and then it moves, or moves one-tenth of a degree, then it moves one degree, then it's almost out within two weeks. So early March of next year to mid-March, again, we could see some major peril for Trump as Rahu, having just gone over his natal Venus, then goes over his natal Saturn, both in the 12th house, and he's in Jupiter, Saturn, Dasha, which has just started. And again, we already know what's going to be happening at that time. The house is going to be conducting oversight. Again, look for some embarrassing revelations. I think one of the biggest ones is going to be his tax returns. They're going to be subpoenaed. Again, we also could see some indictments, especially as they relate to his children. I think it's very likely and possible that Mueller is going to hand down some new indictments very soon. This is just my personal opinion based on the way we see things, but I think his son, Don Jr., is in major, you know, potential peril, and also, of course, some of the other associates. But we could definitely see by, you know, late winter, early spring, some major, major embarrassing revelations for Trump, which could include women, Definitely in his work and his career and money, because Venus is, of course, the car of women. It's also his 10th house ruler. And then Saturn, of course, in the 12th, both in the 12th, have to do also with money, resources, and hiding them and having those things exposed. Rahu going through his 12th has already exposed a ton of his secrets, like, again, all this stuff with women. I said this early in 2017. I'm sorry, early 2018. I said when we had the eclipses in January 2018 that all of this stuff with women was going to explode this year. This was before we really knew that the Stormy Daniels were going to turn into anything. I said, no, it's going to explode. And it has in ways, I mean, because it's such a scandalous president and presidency, we've not even been paying that much attention to this like tell-all book that she wrote about his penis. and I mean... All of this embarrassing stuff. Can you imagine how that must feel? I mean, again, this is the probably the most vain man in the world. And we've already seen Rahu going, just going through his 12th house and close to Saturn Venus, exposing these 
secrets and these embarrassing secrets, which is the 12th house. As Rahu gets even closer by exact degree, look for it to magnify, as I said, and combine with Jupiter-Saturn, you know, moving from Jupiter-Jupiter to Jupiter-Saturn, what kind of embarrassing revelations could come out? Well, again, like I said, money, more stuff with women, and maybe even PP tape. <laughs> now, I don't know, but it's I, I expect there to be some excruciatingly embarrassing things that come out. And again, I think one of the most embarrassing things for him will be the revelation that he doesn't have all the money that he says he has. I think this is one of the biggest reasons why he didn't release his tax returns, frankly, is he's probably not a billionaire. Most people that have looked into what he does says it's probably likely he's not a billionaire. Or if he is, it's barely. And it's on paper. It's like a net worth kind of thing. But if you factor in all the people he owes money to or all the le how leveraged he is, it's probably it's nowhere near 10 billion or whatever he said. That's purely made up number. So just the embarrassment of how much he's actually worth. Of course he'll deny it and say it's just fake news or whatever, but who, you know, this stuff, no matter what anyone says, you can just see his behavior. He's actually he's seething right now because he has no control over these things and he's being exposed as being weak, as being as not being able to affect change. After the midterms, he thought he was going to, there would be a red wave. He believed all the stuff he said. He thought getting out there, demagoguing the caravan and all that was going to actually, you know, hold on to the house or whatever he thought. But again, that certainly didn't happen. And he lost the house and he knows what that means and picked up a couple seats in the Senate. But again, you know, that's something, but it's definitely not a buttress against the tide that moved to the left which is obvious to anyone who's objective. And the fact that he's really, you know, losing his face in a lot of other ways, like the embarrassment of the, of the, um, you know, not honoring the World War I veterans, um, even, you know, after banning the CNN reporter, he lost that in court. So it's been quite a few losses here. He's, he's not been looking good since the since the midterms, and again, his life just got a lot harder, and it's going to get even harder in Jupiter-Saturn starting in January, and, you know, it's sad for all of us, because he's the president, and this is just horrible, and it's kind of what I said was going to happen. We're going to have hyper-gridlock. We're going to have the House controlling one body, the, the Senate controlling the other, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the Democrats controlling one, and the and the Republicans controlling the other, even more polarized, more contentiousness, and Trump just agitating the whole thing because that's the only thing he knows how to do. So buckle up and strap in, but I thought it would be good to check in again, especially after midterms. Um, I did get it pretty right. I said I definitely expected them to take the House. I'm not expecting a huge blue wave like they're not going to flip the Senate, but it definitely could, and I said that in the video. I definitely, my final prognosis was ultimately we're going to be more polarized than ever, um, and that's what we have. And looking at this, looking at the transit of Rahu over Trump's planets in the 12th, looking at the fact that Trump is going into Jupiter-Saturn in January, right before the Democrats take over the House, strap in, buddy. It ain't about to get any easier for you, and you can tell that he knows it. 